We've been working with the concept of linearity, which includes properties of scaling, superposition, and time shifting. And here are some exercises to get more used to the concept of superimposing functions on top of each other. This one we've already seen in class is a unit step, one of t, minus another unit step, one of t minus four. And this is going to cause the function to go up and then come back down. So if we were to sketch this, the times of interest are 0 and 4. The height of interest is 1. And then if we plot this, it's a unit step that goes up to 1 and then comes back down at time 4. This is 1 of t minus 1 of t minus 4. Let's look at another example. This is the same function, except we've added something else to it, which is uh, twice a unit step at time 6. So this means shift to the right by amount 6, and then the 2 means we're going to scale it so that it's double the normal height. So if we plot this, the times of interest are 0, 4, and 6. Again, uh, we have two heights here, 1 and 2. We're going to go up to a level 1 until time 4, and then it's going to come back down to 0. And then at time 6, it's going to jump up to a height of 2 and stay there. The next example involves a unit impulse function, and then two steps, one going up and then the next one going down. And these are shifted to the right by amounts 1 and 2. So if we sketch these, the times of interest are just going to be 0, 1, and 2. The height that matters is just going to be 1. And we're going to use the arrow symbol to denote a unit impulse. So a unit impulse at time 0 is just going to be drawn with an arrow, which means that it's actually infinitely high and has an area of 1. Then we have a unit step that goes up to 1, and then at time 2 we come back down. Here are some more examples, except this time we're going to show the graph and then ask for the mathematical description. This is a ramp function that starts at time 0, and one way we can describe this is in two parts. It's got a value of 0 for time less than 0, and then it's equal to t for time greater or equal to 0. Another shorthand way of writing this is this is a unit ramp, and we're going to multiply by our favorite unit step function, which automatically causes it to be 0 uh, for time less than 0. Here's another one. This is a ramp that's starting at time 0, and, but it levels off at time 1. And so this would have three intervals of time, 0 for t less than 0. Then it's going to be equal to t for uh, any time between 0 and 1. And then it's just going to be equal to 1 for any time greater than or equal to 1. I won't write out the... Uh, the other method just yet. I'll show you another example first, which is here we have a function that goes up and then it comes back down. And this actually has several intervals, or well, three intervals of interest. It's going to be 0 for t less than 1. It's going to be 1 for time between 1 and 2. And then it's going to be minus 1 for any time greater than or equal to 2. Okay, let's also try to use our uh, unit step notation to describe these functions. So in the second case, uh, where we have the ramp that levels off, we already know the beginning. This was just uh, written as t times 1 of t. That's our ramp. Now we need it to level off at time 1. This requires a little bit of thought. I'm just going to write the answer here, and then we can talk about how this works. So this is a unit step 
which guarantees zero before time one. But uh, this has also been multiplied by t minus one. And the idea is that for any large amount of time, both of the unit, unit step functions are equal to one. So basically what we have is t minus quantity t minus one, which is just going to be equal to one. So uh, with a little bit more thought, you can verify that uh, this actually works. Uh, let's look at the other case. Is Another way of writing this is we have a unit step that's been shifted to the right by one minus twice a unit step that's been shifted to the right by two. So those are two alternative ways to uh, write these, to describe these functions.